Hey guys, Tyra up here, bringing you a 2v2 today. We are on Eindhoven country. Playing today, spawning in the north, we have Master Steve playing as US forces, who has airborne, heavy cavalry, and urban assault. Team out with him is Jelly Bones with the British forces, who has special weapons, royal engineers, and commandos. From the south, we have explosive shit. <laughs> Playing as uh, OKW, immediately going for Grand Offensive and teaming up with him as Start Dust with Osir, going for Spearhead. This is a Patreon backer submitted game. Allies, a range team around 380. Axis random team, Start Dust, I think 370, and Explosive 140. So stand back up on the cutoff there, not a bad idea. Oh, sandbags and wire. So well defended cutoff for the axis also. Coop wagon peppering away, but the tank trap working well there for Master Steve. Could be an idea to try to get a piece of wire, just a simple one one sider, but you know the Okadu play can of course crush that with the Kubel, so. Uh, it's an option. Would have been nice to get some sandbags up in the centre though with that section. Yep. Very important on that mid VP. And wow, we're wiring up a storm here. Start dust. And there we go, MG getting a decent burst in. Jelly Bones trying to dodge away. Do the option at that stage to maybe crawl out. Retreating. There we go, eventually overwhelmed on the fuel point. Now going for the cutoff. Quite a few heavy cover positions for the riflemen to fight from here if they want to, and a little bit clumsy here, explosive. And drop some mine planting though, and doing a good job hiding behind the tree line, avoiding taking any more cool damage. Okay, so oftentimes in these kinds of scenarios, the players bullying you with the Kubel, you just got more to blob up. Try not to fight isolated against it. You can force it away with small arms damage a lot faster. But the Axis do manage to secure the fuel point. Didn't see how that squad got forced away. Royal Engineers coming in on the flank. They still do lose control of that point. So a decent cut off there from the Axis, denying quite a few sectors. Oh, Ford Ambulance play here from Master Steve. A bold strategy. Ruffman, now it's, you know, decent at longer ranges, but not excellent. This is the wheelhouse of Fusiliers. Yeah, I, I think it's like 20 or 25% less DPS than Fox Creed is in point blank. Slightly more at max range. But uh, some nice cover positions here. Helping out and uh, with, with the Ford Reinforce eventually does make a breakthrough. Machine gun was coming across but doesn't get there in time. About to get flanked by the Royal Engineers. Do we have the option of throwing an anti tank grenade here? And they take it. Don't really have enough firepower to win against both these squads after that point, though. Here we go, got a Vickers rolling up for Jelly Bones. Maybe suggesting that Jelly is not going to be going for the AEC, has not got the AEC side tech constructing at this stage. We're losing a capture point. A bit of float. If you're not going for uh, a side tech, it's a decent time to go for bolster, maybe bolster into anti tank gun. Damned enemies trying to take a point from us. Got a you know, quite a few squads that can benefit from the bolster. 
So it's pretty typical at this timing with the uh, no AC style. A 2 2 2 coming in at a very nice timing here for Start Dust. Of course, the Axis with that double fuel for a while. This is very fast. This is. You know, Ambo has pulled back to base, so it's nice and safe. It has been a captain start. And Master Steve does not have the anti air half track in the build yet. There's resources for it, though. Be careful, don't retreat here too late. Oh, that could be a dead squad of riflemen. Two, two, gonna start the chase. And there it goes. Ouch. Getting forced away on the edge now as well, and the anti air half track in the build, but yeah, this is close to a minute late starting production on this. I don't think it would have been in a position to defend against that 2 2 dive, but maybe would have been able to stop this OKW pressure after that point. So it's going to cost the Allies quite a lot of territory control. We do have the anti tank gun rolling out for Jelly Bones now, though. Sandbags there that could be made use of the section. Anti gun lining up. I, you will probably shoot through here. I'm not sure if you can shoot through like the thickest part of those trees. I don't think I've seen too many attack rounds through there. Incendiary grenade out. And uh, I could have your troops behind some cover. Got a wall of mines coming up down there as well. Master Steve does have a sweeper. Oh, a T gun. Does not get a second opportunity. 2 2 2 ducks behind the wall fast enough. And there we go, anti air half track on the field. Every player does have a raquette in, in construction. That's not here yet. Yeah, those mines. Captain. Oh, doesn't quite trigger it. Oh! Oh, what? Oh, it ends up dying. Oh, that is no good for Master Steve. Two squads down. He could not afford that. At least he is able to recover the bar. That is very painful. Big grenade. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, the double mines. Two, two, two coming in from the side. Switch it around with the AT gun. I think with the Royal Engineers getting forced off like that, the 2-2-2 two, two, two could have stayed in there. Stayed aggressive. Now he's got to be careful he doesn't die to the small arms damage. It would be better to pop smoke a little bit later than that after getting a bit of distance. Otherwise, the squads can just run through the smoke and start shooting you very quickly. They do dive in quite deep, hoping to get that small arms damage. The 2 2 2 has reasonable armor, though. Unlikely that was going to work. And the allies are struggling. There's a rifleman losses for Master Steve. Ultimately hurting the territory control quite a lot right now. And doesn't have a uh, 50 cow to lean on uh, in this stage. And gone for captain. Has gone for rangers. And it might actually be a decent idea to tech lieutenant. But we'll see how things pan out. Has got some rangers in. This could become a bit of an issue though. With uh, no real long range to assist. Gotta make sure this anti air half track's in the right position. Explosive, you know, just camping behind cover, not really pressing the issue. Sherpan's headquarters coming up on the cutoff, so 
Not a harass possible for the allies going forwards. We've got a glider getting deployed now by Jelly. Got some uh, weapons coming through for Jelly as well. And generally, I think going for Bolster before Weaponrax is the better way, though. Weaponrax are cheaper. It's just, you know, typically Brits kind of require two weapons to be effective. And then if you've got two weapons, the squad starts to die, they start to drop the weapons. Which can be reduced somewhat by having a... Uh, the five men lower your chances of dropping those weapons doesn't straight reduce the odds but if you drop one or two models you can retreat and generally i'm more of a fan of going double equip on one squad and no equip on the other looks like both of these maybe got a single weapon that way you have like a super strong long range squad and then a more mobile squad that can uh, run and gun a bit more instead of two mediocre ready. units which tends to be less effective in company of heroes just massing generalists rather than applying specialists in the right positions great range of flank there though from master steve and there go all the okw troops panzer shrieks generally not a good counter to the anti-air half track with the suppression, you have to end up missing. The second squad of rangers now for Master Steve. So replacing all those squads with rangers. To take them a little bit far back. Got to get in position here to assist in time. MG's at a good angle. Pack's coming across now though as well. Going into handbrake mode. Deactivating it, well done. Oof. Oh, decent attack round attempts. I like I like it. Doesn't have VIP one, otherwise take aim was would have been a very strong activation there. And some sandbags up. Interesting angle. The enemy is generally probably pretty strong, but the Axis player could approach from this angle. Going forwards once he scouts that first sandbag deployment. And this is where having some sandbags in the center could be really nice. Oh, Pyrotechnics spots the machine gun. Recon plane up from start dust. It's going to reveal these commandos. But we managed to get some smoke down with the uh, Pyrotechnics squad. MG Green is now though containing the commandos so they can't get that flank cooking. And this is a flak panzer rush from start dust. Interesting. Should be reasonable. Good dodge on the rifleman with that uh, grenade. Best if the squad got into cover here. They end up retreating though. With a squad with no upgrades, the uh, engineers maybe could have won that since they have that VIP 1 stationary combat bonus. Into half track wheeling its way in. Haven't seen too much action though, only one kill, half a star of veterancy. Definitely hasn't been used to its full potential. He's bringing in the smoke now, cover to cover. Half-track coming in from the side, getting some good work done, but the IRSTG Obers melting those ranges. Eventually the axes get turned back, but for how long? Because they've got the flak pans arriving. The allies do have double anti-tank guns, so they are reasonably prepared. Might be a bit of a time for uh, Jelly. Okay, he's got the uh, Cromwell out at a good timing. I was going to say to come into the uh, middle of the map, maybe on grass here, close the ranks a little bit, or oh, Master Steve, uh, oh no, Master Steve, enough manpower for a second anti-tank gun, didn't think he'd be able to stretch it, but looks like he can, 
So is Flak Panzer ultimately not going to get a lot done with the Cromwell arriving. We saw that while this was in production, he had about 50 fuel, so probably have got this out a minute, maybe a minute and a half earlier, and it would have been extremely effective for that timing. But can't quite manage to start dust. Still coming down the far edge this is quite risky. Cromwell could be lurking. Generally with this kind of thing you want your team weapon to be you know, close to the center so it can rotate and doesn't have to push in too far. And if you're extending quite far with the squad you want your medium tank there. Since uh, so much more mobile can back out of arms weight faster. but uh, Vickers kind of spread out two models here two models way out the back the Raffinade doesn't do too much bit of heavy cover soaking that Cromwell does take a couple hits and we got the pack nearby could still get itself in some trouble against this Flak Panzer it's going down to deal with the stern prize on the capture point still pretty close on the victory points in spite of uh, a bit of a weak start from the allies like explosive has not really been pushing too much sometimes it feels like a, quite a few of his units are idle sitting behind cover that really helps help the allies not under too much pressure it's just like a lot of units just camping on that side at the moment Backs do have quite a lot of team weapons in the center. Allies in this case do have the Klaipi eventually, but not for quite some time. Still two command points and quite a bit of fuel off that. So the glider about to go down to the double raketons. Now, having seen double raketons, that anti air half track's going to have to be very conservative. I really want to use it on the back lines. Especially considering there's a recon plane for it to shoot down this game. There's quite a lot of utility. Oh. Yep. Good time to back out. I want to keep that alive. Okay, we've got the bolster now. Jelly. Still has quite a lot of manpower. Pretty common to try to get a uh, mortar pit around this timing. Maybe back here somewhere. Maybe a second squad of engineers could do as well for faster repairs and easy production on that mortar pit. Oh. No smoke from the 222. Stardust just gifting that kill. Black Panzer spinning in circles, getting jammed by the uh, machine gun. Now pushing in once the D crew. On the AT gun. Can't quite get it though. Cromwell's still a little bit damaged. Could take a Faust here. But start does too slow on the activation. Shooting on high explosive. No too much against the Flak Panzer because of that. Switching rounds now. Upgrading the machine gun. And the dozer blade. Second AT gun for uh, Start Dust as well. Indicating he's probably going to go for the Tiger Store, but the command points feel like they've been a, a touch slow this game all round. And especially for Start Dust, one of the lowest. So he's still a long way off the Tiger in spite of pretty much having the resources for it. Lose control of the fuel here briefly. The Axis, though. Axis have these double anti tank guns, but so far the positioning hasn't been too relevant on them. Like this is, I feel like this is a, a bad move being this far extended. With no anti tank gun covering this avenue. 
Master Steve not going to chase. I mean, there should be an anti tank gun covering this. But there is not. So I can understand why he backed away. We we trap up in the center. MG gets some suppression. The Rakitans. Oh, that's not. That's not good. That's not how you want to be controlling your units. Bring in the uh, mortar cover. It's actually a pretty good idea in this situation. Phosphorus coming down, doing some big damage. But yeah, well, the problem was he clicked too far away with the Rakitan, so they turned around. And do like small clicks back, so they stay facing that same direction, so they can set up, shoot the Sherman a lot faster. And so they start running away faster as well. Bad control there for explosive. Oh, the grenades and the engineers go down. It was his second squad of engineers though, so not the end of the world. Cromwell though, it's back for uh, getting back. Here comes the command tiger for explosive. We have the double anti tank guns in a relative, uh, relatively good position, getting a few hits in. Activate the AP ammo. Cromwell could still be in a little bit of trouble here. Got the double anti tank guns trying to get something going. The enemy is in trouble. Our hammer tactics are ready. Okay, one AT gun gets decrewed by the sections. Cromwell though didn't continue to back away. The pack still chasing him down. Tigers across here now as well. This could be the end of the Cromwell. No, it gets a great shot on the pack. Then smokes to cover. The AT gun has hit Vet. So can use the sprint. He's trying to get away with that now. Should try to charge through the smoke here. He's set up and there goes the AT gun. The Tiger really wants to kill that Cromwell. Misses a shot. He's bringing in the frag bombs. Gonna stun this. Doesn't do a lot of damage. The Tiger has taken an engine crit from the engineers. Cromwell trying to get away. The AT gun does go down though. But good fortune there for the Cromwell with the Tiger missing. Otherwise I think he would have chased him a bit more aggressively. He'd probably gotten the kill and gotten away as well. But it would have been ideal to try and run the AT gun through the smoke by it a bit more time. Probably still would have died to the Cromwell, I mean to the Tiger, but maybe he could have recruited it. Would have been further away from the double packs. So they couldn't have killed it off. Maybe behind a sight blocker. Showing on high explosive. Again, getting some pretty good hits on the infantry, up to 13 kills already. Black Panzer by comparison only at 11. It's been on the field for much longer. So maybe shows, you know, partially the inactivity of Stardust. And the strong start to the uh, Sherman. Oh, here come the double Rakitans. Sherman though, with that extra armor, bouncing a shot there. Those Blake coming in clutch. Oh! Greedy is dead on the corner. How did that happen? They were clumped up. Was that from Tiger Friendly Fire? Commando's grenade, maybe? I'm not sure. Either way, Greedy down. Not good for start dust. Kind of a. Back in the infantry department, but he's managed to field himself at Tiger now. Along with double pose, so fast repairs. Hammer was the choice for Jelly. And there's going to be a Firefly, which I think is a good choice against the Double Tigers. Stark Dust, I mean, uh, Jelly rather, only has one anti tank gun. And, uh, you know, it's a pretty strong infantry base. Doesn't need the extra anti infantry from the Comet over the Firefly. Tiger 
Oh wow, the Cromwell died there. I didn't think the AT gun would get another shot in, but I guess it was the uh, Rakittens. Clip gets some revenge though. One of the Rakittens getting decruised. And the Tiger's going to stick around to kill that off. That's interesting. I don't think the Allies really wanted it anyway. He's hungry for the kill. Feels a bit more confident with the uh, Cromwell being dead. The Firefly is arriving. Tiger does eventually get the D crew. Firefly bounces the first shot. Firefly doesn't have the best penetration at long range. I think it's like 210. Along with another uh, allied tank destroys at max range. Uh, this is a dangerous game the Sherman's playing here. Tiger rolling up the Shrieks do end up getting suppressed by this machine gun. That was a bit lucky. Otherwise, I think that was just about in double Shrek kill range. Still have to penetrate that Dozer's frontal armor, but. That was a dangerous one for Master Steve. And a triple cap set up behind this by the Axis. I fly quite far back. So the Tiger's trying to bait him in. Got the anti tank gun in a nice position, but the Pyrotechnics Tommy should see this. That brings it right into max range there. T-Gun trying to get some hits but bouncing and now under LNG fire. Oh. It's going to be a big calliope. A lot of units in this area. The sharpest scatter though. Oh there we go on the tail end. It's a few more kills. No wipes though. The start does do a pretty good job handling this Tiger combined with the AT guns. Superior positioning so far. Oh, what happened over here? Okay, jumps back into the Sherman. This is where things can get a little bit tough as US forces. This is where you need to use your Major to try and spot. Otherwise you're bleeding a lot of manpower to these Tigers. Trying to get vision with them. A little ambush here with the commandos, decrewing one of the packs. Firefly could come forwards and try to kill this off. There's a bundle grenade. Here comes the Firefly now. Do have vet up sections with the pyrotechnics, some good spotting. Unfortunately, uh, doesn't get there in time to kill off the decrude AT gun. Might still have a chance yet, though. That actually, the brend up section decrues it quite fast. Could even toss out a gammon bomb here. Which I think would probably kill the AT gun at this stage. Wouldn't do it from full health, but I think from, uh, from that threshold it would. Throw some base howitzer fire on it. It's a bit slower coming through, but it looks like it's going to stop Stardust from picking it up. He's got a Panther coming in now, though, as well. Got a Centaur from Jelly, which is not a good choice. You know, Master Steve still has that anti air half track, right? Don't need the anti air. Definitely need more anti tank. But uh, gets a snare off on the panther. Panther's in some trouble now. Firefly. Gonna charge through the smoke. Probably missed about one shot worth of uh, firing time. He's gonna go for the tulip rockets. One connects only though. A T gun rolling up. Panther. Backing away. He's gonna lose vision. I think. Uh, if Jelly at the start of the smoke didn't attack ground, then charge through the smoke. Look for another shot. Probably would have been a dead panther there. Oh, looks like 
looks like Master Steve taking a battering while this is going on as well. We One AT gun now. getting decrewed. Looking a touch grim for the Allies all of a sudden. You can see their army sizes. What's that about 25, 30 behind? Combined. Got the Bren there, but I can understand retreating fast. Black Panther was piling up the damage. Got the uh, Vet 2 now. The weapon cooldown. This is firing very quickly. Okay, Brumbeer now from Start Dust. It's going to be a bit of a struggle on his pop cap. Might cause some reinforce issues, but. Just squeeze it in here. A lot of tanks though, only two pies to repair. Might need some downtime for those. Bit of bad scatter there for the Calliope to start things off. That was unfortunate, that could have been a Mondo wipe. Oh, engine damage. Target taking quite a few hits. We do have a Jackson rolling up. Smoke to cover from the AT gun. And Jackson decides to disengage, doesn't want to tussle with those Panzer Shreks. Ranges a little bit low starting this fight, and uh, the light cover not really saving the day since those ISTG Obers are ignoring it. Well, re greatly reducing it at least. It's so going down very quickly. I see it was pretty good counter to the double ranges. Make it harder to apply them effectively. Yeah, cover their uh, Bryn here. Is that the Bryn drop squad? No. Ooh, that's a nasty Brombeer over the head. Or over the house rather and it results in the wipe a bit of follow-up from the machine gun and the overs didn't give a jelly much time to react allies uh, very far behind on the victory points now it's almost even you know both teams were in the low 300s but now they've fallen very far behind with the arrival of those tigers Go. Some vision from the major. Right, some easy damage on the Panzer IV. Might hmm. be out the back. I thought I heard it. Oh, there we go. Pretty good hit, and that results in the decrow on the Rakitin. Rather poor dodging. We're under fire for a long time there before it starts to move. And that's really good news for the Allies. It's going to free up their tank destroyers to be far more effective. Especially on this side of the map, explosive. Now it only has the Panzer Shreks. To uh, deal with these tank destroyers. Looks like explosive actually going to turn that Rakitin over. Master Steve wants the second AT gun after losing that M1 earlier. Makes sense. That was a pretty much Popcat limited army. The attack ground work there and uh, nice teamwork. Use the engine crit. Probably have queued up a retreat after that though. Okay, Panther making a bit of a move, but I'm not sure it really wants to do this. Good Molotov there. Obers hang about to throw their own grenade. I mean, oh, they do go down. I was going to say they nearly go down, but a Max Ranger on the rifleman results in the white. A bit greedy there for explosive, trying to throw that grenade before retreating when he's so low on health. 
Got some the squad. MG looks like he's full for jelly as well. Since you're doing his best. Here comes the Calliope though, that's a lot better. And the Ogres go down, explosive. He blasted off the map right now. Tiger coming in, looking for the Centaur kill and gets it. Shield rockets. Oh, there we go. Gets the stun on the Tiger. The Command Tiger's forts provide some protection. A lot of damage on these Axis tanks. Oh, Jackson coming in a bit too close range. Now at risk of death, but we've got a second AT gun from the site. Misses and bounces on the Command Tiger at this stage, but a little risky sitting in front of all these anti tank guns. Takes a, a battering. Swap to cover the exit. Could mean a lot more damage. Allies maybe pulled a little bit too far back with those tank destroyers. They're in range to punish that Tiger more. Explosive over here, switching rounds. M1 rotated more towards the center. Black Panzer camping the far VP, so not much the allies can do down there. It's a tick under 100 points. Rebuild on the Obers, in fact, double rebuild on the Obers. For explosive, that's interesting. Thought he might try to go for a walking Stuka in this situation. Did get this truck quite some time ago. I feel like a walking Stuka would be very strong. The allies do have quite a few team weapons. And the Obers, you know, they're also very strong against infantry, but they also have a much higher chance of getting wiped against that Calliope. Just ready to fire again. Let's see his charge in. Rangers do have, you know, the Thompsons. They are one of the better mid range submachine guns. A little bit less drop off than some of the other SMGs. So, actually doing okay against the Fusiliers at those ranges. Using. Talking about the Rangers. <laughs> and the distances at which they're effective. Okay, we've got a Comet out at the far side. I think this is what the Centaur should have been all along. Stalled to the Comet. Be able to kill off this flak panzer. Tiger's in the centre, so Comet is uh, pretty free to chase. Does not go for it. T gun decrewed by the IR STG Obers. Jackson a little bit far back. Going forwards now for the Panzer 4. Missing its first shot though. Commandos could maybe be used as like a camouflage spotting squad at this stage as well. Just put them on hold fire. Oh, the flak panzer, that's nasty. That's across here now. Throw an anti tank grenade on the flak panzer. Firefly yeah, looks like it's coming down now, but it's maybe a touch too late. Probably will be better off just. Keeping it in the center. Oh wow, he's gonna go in for the flak panzer kill. That is not something I would have attempted. Too risky. Grandy comes out with the Faust. Firefly's here now though. One more shot and that comet is dead. Tiger's coming across to mop it up. Yeah, that was a that was a greedy from Jelly. That dive in there. Even without a green deer there for the Faust, just the threat of the rotation from the Axis tanks pushing in that far with a uh, cop that was on about two thirds health is 
a bit too risky. Luckily, though, the AT gun did end up getting out of there. Oof. The squad's gone. Unfortunately, though, the commandos did not. 58 points now for the allies. Nice to see you still at the pop cap limit. So, uh, can afford to play quite recklessly going for these victory points. Suffer a bit of bleed. Smoke out. Sharon takes a hammering. I'm just doing well in this fight. Oh, but until the Brombeer lands that shot. And then they go down because of it. Oh, that Brombeer. Doesn't have uh, that many kills, but it's, I feel like it's resulted in two or three wipes. Damage is done. Oh god, then the tiger as well. Oh, Steve. Oh, dodge after that tiger shot connected. Ends up going down. And when I said he could be a bit reckless, I didn't mean like losing squads reckless, just you know. Suffering three or four models and then retreating. Oh the tiger though, this is a reckless move. Should probably go down the chill rockets, one of them. Connecting. Panzer 4 comes in as well. Anti tank grenade potential. Got a fresh 17 pounder up. Doesn't even need the AT. AT grenade. And uh, there we go. Explosive. A little bit of a throw. Diving in. Like, I can kind of understand losing the tiger, but then throwing the. Panzer 4 in there afterwards was not good. 10 points remaining. Allies doing a pretty good job on the capping at this stage, repairing up the Sherman. Getting a bit faster on that point. Stardust though, look at this 1700 manpower. Can build anything at this stage and should be building uh, more squads to cap with, I would say. Quite a lot of scatter there, doesn't hit too much. Shrek's now looking for the kill on the 17 pounder. And uh, there's no real infantry there to stop them. Is that a second Calliope actually? Crossing away the squad from the center. And I able to cap there now. Brumby has just been driving around like a like a learner driver. Uh not really effective. Could probably have stopped the allies from completing this capture with some sharper control. 17 pounder still alive, the Shrix didn't manage to kill it and there we go getting a good hit on the panther. Didn't really need to activate the piercing shots, there's no shot blockers in the way there. Just throw out a uh, smoke nade, I just don't want to run through it if possible. Got some commandos getting deployed by Jelly. It'd be quite nice to deploy them somewhere around here so they can still make use of that glider for reinforcing. Some major artillery coming down as well. More attack rounds into the smoke. Oh, the mortar half track coming through, trying to flame barrage this, but goes down. Double LMG Grenadiers making short work of those sections. The Allies are holding on, six points remaining. It is healthy again. 17 pounder is up. Probably it can still stay, you know, in a relevant position. Get some damage done. No, I think the 17 pounder should have an angle, but it misses. Jelly doesn't have the munis for the uh, piercing shot anymore. Decent job on the far edge, trying to stop these OKW squads from capping. Having a raquette in here that could come through now to do some capping as well. 
They're holding on to the center, and they do manage to stop the cap. Just start repairing up the Sherman on the spot. The Panther's blitzing its way across here, hoping to capitalize on that engine crit. Might repair off enough damage, though, that the engine is no longer... Yep. An issue. Switching over to armor oh, piercing. Got the rakette in there now as well. Sherman, considering switching onto the rear armor of the Panther, decides against it. I think it's an okay choice, either way. Now, uh, branch out to the far edge there, Jelly. Stardust. Still, you know, he's been with the same composition for a long time now. Did boot that one half track, then lose it. Really, you have to max out your pop cap in this situation. A couple extra squads of capping infantry will probably close the show here for the Axis. Ruben's popcat for even just like two pyos. Do the trick. Okay. So far, not so good against that 17 pounder. Seems like the axe is determined to make it work. We'll go over into the Werfer now. I mean, you know, playing with the Werfer, An infantry section of police uh, has been trained. You know, it's a fine option. I mean, you're at six points remaining. This kind of army, they should be able to close the show, and he's repairing at max range there with the Brumbeer. It was down to the 17-pounder. That was not ideal. Seemed like Stardust was so busy microing the Tiger, I wasn't paying attention to the Brumbeer. It's down in two shots to the 17 pounder. Has arrived. 17 pounder now starting to vet up. It's got a more accuracy, and there we go, connecting. Yeah, uh, connecting again. Now it's max vet. Got the reload bonus. This is where the major. This was talking about with the enhanced vision from vet. So valuable for the allies. And all of a sudden, things have almost completely turned on the head. Now the Axis are behind. They really, really want to kill that 17-pounder. But they could just play on the flanks. The Tigers difficult to stop on the edges. You know, there's a few uh, sight and shot blockers. Make the Tigers quite effective and then you're pulling the uh, Allied anti tank guns out of position potentially as well. Looks like a low command target hidden over there for explosive. There's the Tiger on the other side now. comes the Calliope. Pretty good hits. Whoa! Again, the Major providing vision, allowing that nasty Calliope barrage. Double Pyos and the Mortar Half-Track all dead. Stardust, of course, can instantly rebuild that with that 2,000 manpower float, but still not ideal. And what was that? Explosive just Throwing away the fusiliers, those VET 5 range, or VET 3 ranges rather, making short work of them. Lining up with the Sherman. Tiger having some issues with the elevation here. Not landing almost any damage. This raised mound making it very difficult for the Tiger to fire. Oh, what happened now? Another mortar half track. Made another one, lost another one. 
What's the range on the uh, 17 pounder? Is it the same as the mortar half track? Can I use this barrage? <laughs> oh, the Firefly is max vit. It's got the bonus damage now. It can just one shot these. It's got the 240 damage. It just one shots the mortar half track there. Oh, and then the base how to fire. This is an over's way and explosive. He's actually struggling for manpower. Really hurts him losing all those open models. These houses might catch him on retreat now as well. Oh. Rising into the uh, pier zone over here. A little bit of damage onto the structures. No real infantry lost. Tiger come around the corner, but there is an AT gun there. Take that mine. Engineers spotting, allowing uh, quite a few hits, and that AT gun is VET 3. And now has to back off as well. Jelly able to squeeze in a comet now. Pretty much be pop capped at that stage. But this is uh, troubling. X is making a move for this far VP, the Rakitin. Not here in time to save it. Oh, this is bad news for the Allies. Bring in the Assault. The squad's sprinting out to the far side, but it's well defended. The Calliope jams the capture over here for quite some time, and here come the Rangers. Cover to cover as well coming in. Gonna go for some smoking caps. Tiger getting nullified by that smoke and now could actually be in some trouble. Rear armor exposed. The riflemen need to get in here. Doesn't quite get onto the rear armor of the tiger. The kitten's rolling up the Shimon getting some front armor pins though. Oh maybe if the squad ran straight here, got an engine crit on. I mean, did Tiger? Oh, what's happening over here, though? Tiger and Panther. They have to knock out the Comet. Panther now could go for a move on the Calliope's, but he's, he's trying to get away. He's going in, no, maybe for the Firefly, but the Panther's both missing the 17 pounder continuously circling around. Doesn't have munis. Oh! Doesn't even need to. I thought the smoke would block that, but does not. This panther just sitting here. Oh, activate, act, accidentally activating brace. I'm not sure what that was about. Could have got the uh, kill on the panther. Section dies on retreat. Maybe he was trying to activate the uh, piercing. Oh, he doesn't have the means for the piercing anyway. Not sure. Either way, uh, that was a very reckless move from Stardust. Lucky to get away with the second panther. Probably should have just died with that panther going in after those calliopes. There was almost nothing back there for the allies to stop him. It can be hard to make those kind of decisions. Uh, so calliopes did eventually knock out a, that uh, repair bunker. Oh, was it? No, it was a command bunker, wasn't it? Find a mid bunker. And the allies hang in there. Must have did a pretty good job, you know, the cover to cover. Allowing him to close the distance on the point fast enough to jam the capture. I thought that explosive had enough to get the job done, but didn't. It was well handled. Second Jackson uh, queued up here by Master. Be able to feel it until he uh, decrews. He's Sherman. Even then, I, I think he will have enough. Maybe not if he's fully reinforced though. Oh, 
Ooh, that's some bad handling of the tiger there, spinning around in circles again and again. His vet through Rakit and just slamming in the damage. And a lot of bounces. Oh, that tiger's very lucky. Oh, the firefly though, wanting to chase around the corner and gets it. Tiger dies, abandoned though. Oh, and the uh, Calliope kills that off. 17 pounder does go down. Well handled there by Stardust, circling around 17 pounder. Was uh, helpless in that situation. Or the Allied anti tank had rotated to deal with the other Tiger. And the Rangers staying in the circle. Five points remaining, and they stop the clock there. Sherman on this point. Attack rounding, cover to cover. The Rangers going to sprint in to jam the capture there. It's a decent attempt from the Axis, but they only managed to get one point off the clock. This is just asking for a squad wipe. Hanging around for this long and when the Rangers were in there. Gets away luckily and maybe the Allies didn't notice the abandon on the Tiger. I'll try to creep that away now, partially repaired. Good news for Explosive because he really doesn't have the manpower to build another Tiger. This is a real lifesaver for him. Interesting, another Centaur for Jelly. I think I'd be building a, a Comet, if anything. Something that can, you know, soak a few hits from the Panthers and the Tigers fight back against them. Centaur uh, is really can't do anything. Axis already don't have that much infantry. Should be able to handle that with the double Rangers, double Calliopes. Only the anti-air. Uh, a half track. Mm, so now start us with the double panthers tiger. Could cause some major trouble for the allies. Righty into the center. Subsets from capping. Now the axe is taken under a hundred. Decent worth a strike. Uh, the scatter not too good. Get too many kills with that one. Tiger around in the corner on the uh, centaur. Need to take guns there. Tiger misses the second shot and now maybe could uh, take an engine crit. No AT grenade though from Jelly. Missed a moment. Panther blitzing out to safety. But then stopping in double AT gun range. Smoke now to try to get away the Firefly rolling up. Has to go for an attack round or maybe some tulip rockets. No dice. There's the Calliope into the center. Oh, what happened back here? Did a plane crash somehow kill the infantry section? Feels like those that almost never happens these days. The jelly, uh, unfortunately, seems to be a victim of it. MG34 on the uh, section note. That's nice for jelly. Next is going to try and make a cap attempt. Forward ambulance. One Calliope is ready to fire the high vet one. Oh, yeah, that was a bit too risky. Three models quite low on health as well. Those individual models. Clypey into the center, but not his infantry actually went in there. Smoke. Oh no, recon him for start dust, but it's not going to last for too long. Tiger making his move though with that vision. Tiger and Panther. Bring the AT gun, and no, oh, that's a full Tiger Assault. Oh, he's got a scramble to defend here. Axis are capping behind this. 
One panther though in some major trouble goes down. This panther just spinning around in circles. The rangers sprinting in with cover to cover. Hiding in the smoke now. Oh, and the tiger just ended up dying back there. The panther exposing his rear armor as well. I don't think the panther would have died to that shot anyway, but it did miss. Rangers doing a good job hiding in the smoke, but who can win this fight as it clears? Oh, there we go. The second Calliope ready to fire now. And that swings it in the allied favor and two pyro wipes and the ob is dead as well. Oh, massive losses for the Axis. That might be GG. Stardust just getting completely overwhelmed. It's a decent start to that, you know, got the recon plane up, decreased the AT gun, but... Oh, boy. This panther just spinning around in circles here, doing nothing. Great use of cover to cover to jam the capture there. And, uh, yeah, the yeah, anti-tank guns doing some good work. The firefly in some big hits. See, Stardust instantly can queue up two more panthers. With so many resources floating. Let's see what he can do with them. Okay, Tiger's healthy again for explosive. Putting the panther himself, so the axes are going to have one last go at it here. Maybe like to see another attempt down the far side. Maybe with uh, one of these panthers. It's a bit faster than the tiger can rotate more easily. Panther, ready for good, good for chasing away Shermans. The Germans have 50 points remaining. Okay, here we go. Stardust just spending it all, burning it all. Points are draining out. Let's get some army on the field now to try and turn this one around. Ford Assembly back there now, so some strong presence for the Allies in the middle of the map. Recover, some capping. Now no Tiger for Stardust to blast through these ranges, they are melting. The Panthers diving in, but they are getting the rear armor exposed. Splitting their damage, so they're not actually getting any kills. There goes one Comet now, though. Calliope into the center, just annihilating the Axis infantry, though. Here comes the Tiger now. Mench with the Panther dive to eventually kill off that Firefly. Tiger trying to back away, but the uh, Vet 3 Rakitten is not having it. Switches the Focus Fire, though. I think he could have with the rate of fire it had. Killed off that Tiger with one more shot. Nice to come back to try and handle this panther. Might still get it though. This panther trying to get around the corner, recruise the pack. Uh, this is usually a shot blocker, but it seems to have been weakened. Might be able to attack ground through that. Oh wow, the commandos deployed out the back here. Clears off the VP and there we go, the allies end up taking it. Oof. Well, some uh, strong play there from Master Steve, really showing us the strength of cover to cover, saving the day on multiple times on the victory points with the smoke and the sprint, bringing the rangers back to the front lines quickly, jamming the captures on multiple occasions. That was huge. The Axis were quite bad at dodging the Calliope barrages. Ended up suffering massive, massive wipes. 44 on this one. This one, 24. And not too long ago, I checked it and it was still at four kills. So those last two barrages or so on it really just uh, sealing the fate of the Axis. I suppose with losing so much high vet uh, infantry this game. Very expensive Obus. Stardust as well. Like, you know, it got to that point where it was about 84 pop. The allies were at six VPs. They just needed a little bit more capping power and they could have closed the show instead. Really focused on trying to kill off that 
17 pounder building like three or so more to half tracks and the Werfer. Well, Werfer did all right throughout the match, but I think with a bit more capping power, some effective tank positioning could have closed the game right then and there. And eventually the Allies do make this comeback. Well done. But yeah, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. The Calliope's the cover to cover. They were uh, very effective on the tail end of this one. Well, anyway, guys, wrap on that. If you like your game recast by me, details are in the video description below. Otherwise, I'll catch you off the next thrilling installment. Goodbye and good luck.